Hello and welcome to Beholder's Eye Side Eye Glamorous Guests. I am Ryan and I'll be your dungeon master today as we follow this tale of the Canaries, a mercenary guild who brave the depths of mines and caverns in hope of adventure and reward. Who would like to catch us up from last week? Um, sure. So last week, uh, Alivari and Wit and Holder the bugbear, we all got to uh, this this cavern, and we were told that we needed to go down and find a little halfling that uh, no, a couple of them actually that had been taken, and they well, they, they, they were wanted, inconsequential. Well, they weren't important. It was just to find out if it's a worthy mine or not. Oh, that's right. We weren't really supposed to find them. We're just supposed to go see if we should mine down here. So we went down, and we had ran into these little. Uh, uh, little robot kind of creatures. They uh, they look like little mechanical boxes and 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 balls in the air and uh, little shield type things. They're they're wild. And so we went through, and they had little elevator things that took us down. And we just walked through a lot of uh, corridors that had some real pretty gems on the wall. But uh, apparently there used to be some some kind of organics down here. And uh, they don't have them anymore. And it's apparently been something like 7,000 years. Which seems like quite a while. And I think that's all we did, basically. Yeah, thanks. So. Mostly we you're got a nice guests of the family. You're on your way to meet the family. And your little friend B9768 is escorting you through the facility, just giving you any information you wanted, as honoured guests are allowed. Oh, and the most honoured guests we are. <laughs> so, as we rejoin well. the group, it is in a slow descent of the um, elevator. This time you notice you haven't passed any other floors. So this elevator is designed mainly to go down to this one area. So this is probably one of the more important establishments. And as you come to the end, you notice it starts to open up more, and you're about 30 feet off the ground, and there's no walls around you there's a good 15 feet you're slowly descending through a central column the room lightens up and it's plated gold with platinum intricate details this is like these the whoever lives here is not short of money whatsoever so as you continue to descend as the elevator settles into its final resting place you can see around you there are now six of the shield robots and in the corridor directly in front of you you can see two of the five armed creatures and so there's next, there's two shield and two of the there's two the column five ones. the column guys there's two of them and there's six shield robots in total. How tall are the column guys? About six foot. Okay. Between the two column guys, you can see a door. This door is solid gold, intricate details. You can see signs of wear on the outside, like it has been forced open in the past. And you can see two nice um, statues: one of an elf and one of a human on either side of the door. The human has a crown on his head, and the elf has a tiara on her head. To your Ooh, left, that's a marvelous tiara. And it's actually a tiara. It's the, it looks like it's not part of the statue. It looks like you could take those off if you really wanted to. On your left and your right, you can see two short corridors. <laughs> fine grin, just keeps getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> two finely detailed doors that they just look normal doors, but the area you can tell looks nice. You can see what look like potted plants. Um, are they actually growing plants? No, I was, I was trying to... The, the pots. You can see the pots where potted plants would be, but there's nothing growing in them. There's just, it's okay. just dirt. It's dirt. Okay. And there are, they're, they're dotted around the room and the corridors. Behind you, there is also another door. And this one just... It looks like the two doors to your left and your right. Uh, so this tiara. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. There are lots what? of robots around you if you really want to try and attack and take a tiara. Sure. Be, no, be nice. I don't want to attack anything. I just want to... Can I just investigate the... Oh, right, the, the statue. Statue? On, the statue on the left. While it's normal scale, the elf, it's on about a four foot high pedestal of marble. Uh, so, uh, be, be, be nice. Either side of uh, like they are who, nice. Who are these, detail. these statues of? These are quite marvelous. They're, they're magnificently the, festooned. The um, man on the left is our great king, Galgora. Galgora. Who has ruled this city for the last 15 cycles. And on uh, the right what's, hand, a, what's a cycle? Uh, a cycle is one of our operational runtime. I do not know how it would translate into your uh, calendar years. I think. Can you can does it translate into elf lifetimes? Maybe in an elf lifetime, one cycle would be the equivalent to three elf lifetimes. Uh, excellent. On the right hand side, you can see Queen Jalzira. Jalzira. And she, she, yeah, and she has only been with our king for fifteen cycles. She joined him not long into his reign. 
if you would like to either dine and sleep together on the left or right there are stately rooms for you to use and you can be escorted into meeting the family as of first thing tomorrow food will be excellent. provided by the door bef- behind you and i can assist you in any way you need fit oh excellent thank you very much finery is also provided for you there is an range of styles and sizes oh well as you can see i do not need any help with that and he'll kind of gesture to his clothing you know he's got nice kind of pointed curly shoes um <laughs> The, he's got a beautiful pair of purple pants that I can only describe as Princess Jasmine-like. <laughs> and a beautiful shining breastplate. Shining silver breastplate. And the longest flowing silver hair that you've ever seen. Um, well, as you, as you can see, you know, we've got that taken care of. But my, my two companions might uh, need some arraignments. You see Holder's uh. face look kind of hurt, and he's like in super beat up plate armor, and he's just like, well, I thought I looked nice. Oh, you you do, you do, but you know, uh, the plate <laughs> armor might not be good for dinner. It's it's fantastic for the field, but you might want to be in something more comfortable, you know? You wouldn't want to spill some, say, soup on your plate armor and it get all rusty, would you? Are you going to wear your breastplate to, to supper? Well, I never ever have dropped soup. And also, I <laughs> polish it daily so as to prevent rust. So that won't be an issue for me. So you do take it off to polish it? Oh, oh, you will never see me take off my breastplate, my dear woman. <laughs> uh, I don't quite know how to take that. Um, however, I, I do believe that I am already dressed well enough for, to attend such a dinner. And her leather bodice is... Uh, like a corset that ties in the back and that acts as her armor and she has a nice lacy skirt that goes down it's a little bit shorter in the front a little bit longer in the back and she is wearing um a pair of heels that have literal daggers for like six inch daggers for the the heel of these shoes and oh, so, so, some stilettos then yes some very nice stiletto heels and uh yeah she's she's always ready for a party <laughs> <laughs> and her her long flowing eggplant purple hair uh, is currently up in kind of a messy bun situation behind her horns. Excellent. Well, so, um, you said there the, are are two rooms. There are two rooms. Um, if you would like to all share one room, or as we currently now have no get other guests on our calendar in the immediate um, time frame, you are allowed to use both rooms. Food will be served inside the next two hours. We would ask that you attend unarmed and in finery. E- excellent. Well, I will take one room, and the two of you can take the other. Um, I, I will meet you in so. two hours. I would much rather have my own room. Thank you very much. You boys should share. <laughs> as long as it's big enough for me. Oh, I'm I'm very well sure it will be. So, are you splitting off the guys in one, the girl in the other? Um, I just go into one, one on it, whichever one. I'll go into one right now. So. I'll go into the other one. <laughs> Where is Whit going, Sam? Uh, <laughs> the girl or the bear? Which one would you choose? Oh, it depends. This is a tough question. Um, which which one would I have gotten the measure of would be a good person? I don't uh, know. <laughs> who seems the least shady of roll, my two roll companions? Roll two insight checks. Just like quick okay. references on each character. Say first one's for Alvari, second one's for Holder. Okay, so for <laughs> Alvari, a nine. And an eight for Holder. Oh! They both seem like good stand-up people who you, you can rely on in a fight. More oh, than yourself. Damn it. <laughs> Well, um, Alvari, you'll go to Alvari. You're going to go to Alvari's room, okay? <laughs> yeah. Okay. What? Yeah. So what? I'm going to describe. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to describe Holder's room first. So the rooms are pretty much identical, with a small difference. The room that Holder goes into, there are two large, large beds. These are big enough for any creature to fit in comfortably. Fine silks adorn them. There is not a scratch on any of the walls. It's not plated gold, because that would obviously be a bit distracting when you're trying to sleep. But it is very nice. It's marble walls, marble flooring, two large wardrobes full of clothes of any colour and design you can ever think of. And then a small bookshelf with a, ra- a range of literature, none of which any of you would have ever, ever heard of, because it's a bit outdated. And that's the room you find in. Uh, the only difference between the two rooms you're in is, while well, there's two rooms in Holder's room, there's one bed in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> but it does have a nicer seating area of two um, sofas. 
room. Excellent. Um, what are you doing in my room? Uh, well, I, I said I was getting a room, but that, that doesn't matter. I think I think you and I, we may have gotten off to the wrong foot, you know, while I am resplendent among men. Um, sometimes, you know, I might leave a bitter taste in one's mouth. But that, that's that's okay. That's okay. Um, I, I'm willing to look past your, your brief, uh, you know, slight and uh, overlook and, you know, bad judgment and, and offer you... Excuse um, me. What are you doing in my room? You're excused. No worries. Um, <laughs> um, but, 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 but here, uh, here, here, okay? I, I, I have a, I have a, I have a proposal for you. And then he's going to switch to casting a message. Now, now, I, I recently saw an item that I would like to acquire, and I was wondering if you would be down for that, as um, you seem more quick of finger than my than my other companion. Um, you see, there are the two statues outside, one with quite a magnificent crown, and the other with a tiara. I Indeed. would like to procure both of those, and you can have the crown if you wish. <laughs> the crown? <laughs> Excuse well, me. Yes. I would much prefer the tiara, but I would well, be more than willing to more than willing to help you in your endeavor. Well, well, but 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 with your build, the crown would match you so much better. I have very slight <laughs> and elven features, as you can tell, and the tiara would be much more. Uh, Are you calling me head. fat? <laughs> no, no, unrefined is the word I was going for. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No. At, the, at the sound of raised voices, you do notice that four of the children are now behind you, and the elevator has proceeded back up. And B nine seven six A walks over to. You. If you could keep the voices lowered, as this could be seen as disgruntling to any other guests we have in attendance. Well, we have oh, at the I moment, we do like to proceed with a civilized environment. Oh, it's just we get so excited to see each other, my dear man. We just cannot hold ourselves back, you know? We are the best of friends. I, and I I'm do very understand sorry this, you have for chosen the room. You have both chosen the room with one sleeping arrangement. Uh, of course, of course. <laughs> As you have chosen your rooms, uh, we will be sit- proceed to close the doors just so we can keep the area clear and security free. Uh, 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 oh, excellent. But this and is my room. And Holder closes Wait. his door real quick. <laughs> <laughs> and bars it if there's a bar. There are, there are, there are now two shield drones posted at each of your doors. And, Good and night. Wit will uh, stride across the room and jump on the bed. <laughs> Uh, um, well, it seems we've made our arrangements then. Um, you can sleep where you wish. Uh, ah. if you, it seems we cannot come to an arrangement as to, uh, as to abscond, per se, with these items. So, I guess we'll both ah. be disappointed today. <laughs> and Alivari. Um, so how big is this room? The, these are very large. It's like a... 20, 20 sort of feet across from one wall to the other. These are very large, nice rooms. Rugs on the floors, seating arrangements. You, you could There's a petition on one side. You could not see each other at all if you wanted to, but one of you can get the bed, one can't. And it, it, there's the seating arrangement, so it's like a nice chair and a it's, couch or something? So there's a, like a nice, large very detailed sort of coffee table in the middle two three pe- three person sofas on each side or is it couches in America I don't know Both. Um, whatever okay. it works the same way um, but it's two large sofas on either side with a large sort of um, wing back chair on one end and, and and you said that there was there was clothes available is there like a closet there are two or? large wardrobes like there, there are buildings where these wardrobes would be one room in size that you could walk into them and there's everything you can design okay, every style uh, every every form of fabric everything in all varying sizes is there something more princess princess jasmine-esque as pants <laughs> that um Whit there are acquire? princess jasmine pants in there a- any 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 colors or every color i could imagine every color some with <laughs> fine details some without details some with extra patterns one of them actually has platinum weaved into the fabric oh that that one is it purple <laughs> it's purple oh okay yeah that one he, he will has take a little those like go- gold tinsel around the edge as well the little oh. bristles coming off it <laughs> oh you're speaking his language okay yeah <laughs> This this is the one. Okay. Um, he will he will he will take off his pants right then and there and put them on. And he will like show like the, the other pants in his wardrobe, backpack. So Avari doesn't see him at all doing. That. 
like okay. you what? look at each other. There's it's in a partition? walk-in wardrobe. It's a walk-in wardrobe, effectively. It's a, it's, a, it's a small box that is a wardrobe, but you can walk into it and you can't see him around. I would you, like to shut the door and put a chair in front of it if he's inside the wardrobe. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can do that. Is there a keyhole? No, no, these are just two doors. They're not designed to be locked. It's just two push doors. Oh. But there's is no there door any gap? wedged in there. Is there any gap in the door? Could I look under the kind of breach yeah, underneath un- the door? Un- under the door, you can see a small, like, three or four millimeter sort of gap. You can see just below it, like, lights and, moving feet. And so. can I can I see her, like, feet at the other side yeah, a little you can bit? See her feet. Okay, um, I would like to misty step out of the room using my face <laughs> step once per day. Um, oh, you, you misty step out, you land on the bed. <laughs> Okay. In a in a triumphant uh, Peter Pan sort of style. <laughs> okay. Well, you know these what? these people they have magnificent craftsmanship, but their doors stick. <laughs> you know. It's. <laughs> oh. Oh. And you can clearly see that there is a chair wedged up against it. <laughs> couldn't miss oh. the chair if he tried. <laughs> I no, he couldn't miss the chair if he tried. But this is still what he's saying. Oh. I see. Um, I, 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 yes. Well, I um. <laughs> no, it, it's time to go to supper. So, uh, are you ready? Uh, shall we? Oh, you have some fine pants. Yes, have you seen them? <laughs> Those are like the... matching my hair. I love them. I, 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 I know. Um, I, I completely underestimated the man when he said they had all kinds of finery, as you can't get finer than me. But now I am even finer, so I guess it's still true. <laughs> You just contradicted yourself, but I think we should go eat. Oh, I never contradict myself. <laughs> you just said you couldn't get finer than you, but then you said you were finer. I don't remember that. <laughs> your memory is something else. <laughs> Very sad. Bless your heart. Let's go eat. And Holder's in his room, so he's thinking about what Wit said, and so he takes off his plate armor, and he kind of like spit shines it, and <laughs> then he looks super proud, even though it looks exactly the same as it was, and he's just like, yeah. And then he goes to the closet and grabs a pink bow tie and he can't figure it out. So he puts it in kind of like a wrap on his <laughs> hair. <It's> like, <laughs> like just above his ears, maybe? Yeah. Like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. And I love him. When the, the, a doorbell ring, oh, doorbell, a bell starts to ring and the doors are open and you hear, you see B7968 standing in the middle of it. If you would leave your weapons in your rooms, the doors will then be sealed and you can go to the dinner inside the main dining hall. And as you can oh, see, of course. I, I possess no weapons on me. I wouldn't come to you armed. I, I never even arrived with any. It's simply a request that I am programmed to say. Oh, of course, of course. Uh, no no I harm will, taken. I will leave my rapier and my short bow in the room. It doesn't register your shoes as a threat. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Um, that is I, as we emerge, do I see Holder? Yeah, you see it. It's, it's just across the corridor. It's only like okay. oh, my 30 friend. feet across. It's oh. so good to see you. It's, it's been so long. It's fantastic to see you too, Holder. You look resplendent. Have you oh. have you grown another inch or uh, <laughs> shaved? or? Oh, you, you look fantastic. And he, he's like blushing and... <laughs> Kind of, he kind of like pats the bow on his head. Oh, my, my good friends, you know, it's, it's, it's fantastic. You know, while we have only been away for two hours, it seems like years. Indeed it does. Oh. It does my heart good to see you again. Oh, it, it does mine as well, my friend. Your, your bow is simply amazing. <laughs> oh, thank, thank, thank you. <laughs> so as you guys have talked for a second or two, B, uh, B7968 leads you into the main dining room hall and as the doors open this is a lavish hall table is a pure silver covered the chairs are heavy wood with fine cushions on them there are three chandeliers across the top there's a wall of every form of alcohol you can think of every type you won't recognize any of the brands sorry my voice is fine you won't recognize any of the brands and then there's a dumbwaiter that comes down on one side of the room and you see three plates and um, two of the small eye robots that you've seen many times before in this facility take them across and they lay one on each side of the table and one at the head of the table. All three of the mills are identical, you can sit wherever you like. So there's only three chairs? There's there's six chairs on the table but they only make places for three because there's only three of you. I sit at the head of the table. Me, I grab a bottle. You are entitled to grab any drink you require, so we can also pour them for you as well. Oh yes, would you please pour me a drink? The bottle will be fine. <laughs> he just grabs a bottle. 
Are you grabbing at random then, or...? What? Yeah, just random. Okay, you have grabbed that one. Okay. And, Sam, what particular choice would Whip like? Would he like a fine oh. brandy, a whiskey, dwarven ale? Oh, um, I, I, I'll let you decide, my, my good man. A, a glass of, of, of beverage that would befit my station. <laughs> okay. It knows nothing about drinks. <laughs> So, okay, you said, and for yourself, Adam, what sort of drink uh, would you like? Fine wine, champagne, whiskey, brandy? Uh, do you have I'm moonshine? Much... That might be her, her, her taste. <laughs> uh, excuse me. We, we do you have fine homegrown designs. We found a few of the men in the facility were able to brew quite effective alcohols with small amount of substance they found inside the facility. That it is more is, of a no. harsh taste, but it is still very powerful. Mind you, I can handle my moonshine, but I much prefer a good bourbon. But, okay, and he grabs a very intricately designed bottle of bourbon. Like the, the bottle itself is a fine um, decanter sort of shape at the bottom, and it spirals up in a dragon sort of shape to the, to the point of your spout. Now that looks like a drink. It is one of the fancier bottles on the shelves. They pour your bourbon. They lay down a bottle with dwarven writing on it for holder, and for wit, it is more of a jug of not very intricate design on it that is poured for him. And the it liquid that comes like out is very you. clear and very potent in its smell. Um, um, would you happen to have an umbrella? Oh. <laughs> the umbrella I've seen them in, with umbrellas in, in, in the inn. The um comes over and he drops a little umbrella in there for you. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. Like a real as umbrella, right. just like the full one. <laughs> <laughs> as you sit down, you notice the meal in front of you is a very fresh steak that is sizzling and dripping with juices. Mm -hmm. There's two slices of bread that doesn't look as appetizing, and there are what look like off vegetables. What sort of steak is this? This is a steak that was recently procured from a vermin that entered the facility. We haven't had our fresh supplies, but these are what I believe are eaten above ground as normal delicacies. Just we are used to finer creatures, so we call them vermin. This is a very big vermin. Yes, these creatures can grow to... I don't remember what it is off the top of his head. Um, about four feet tall and have considerable speed sometimes. Well, oh, this <laughs> looks very tasty. And he just starts digging in. It sounds like you got rodents of unusual size. We do have incursions into the vicinity of the vermin kind every now and then, but they are dispatched and they are found to be considered delicacies in the other lands of this region. I, and, How and does this unknown vermin taste? It tastes very well cooked and absolutely lovely, but it's not something you've ever eaten before. Well, just it's very peculiar, but wonderful. You you should try How? it, uh, Lavari. And and when did you uh, when did you uh, procure these again? These were procured, I believe, about two days before your arrival. So they are two. still very fresh, and the meat is nice and tender. Or uh, so uh, I've been told. Two of, of days. <laughs> two days. That, that sounds familiar for some reason. <laughs> Uh, are you taking a drink of your, a drink, a drink, of your drink, Ben or yeah, Sam or yeah. As you drink, you realise this is a Dwarven Fire Ale. This is a very strong and potent drink. Give me a constitution save. Okay. <laughs> Eleven. You make it. You handle your drink very well. It burns on its way down, but you, you don't have any reaction to it. Oh, Wit, you should try this instead of your umbrella drink. <laughs> um... Wit will use sleight of hand to pretend to take the drink off of him and drink out of it. Um, okay, if you roll sleight of hand and 19? if you roll perception, <laughs> I say, Ben. Okay. Come on, natural 20. <laughs> Six. Oh. Six. You completely fooled him. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's, it's rather rather weak for my tastes, actually, but um, I'll, I'll try my one with the umbrella. I'll use sleight of hand on my umbrella drink also. Oh. And <laughs> Do I catch anything with an 11? Probably not. Um, you'd have 24 to be his on my sleight of so. hand for my umbrella drink. <laughs> no, um, well, you guys can do another perception test if you'd like to see if he's really drinking his drink. I don't think I'd care. I will I, do one no. for the little robot because he is watching you guys. Um, uh, he doesn't know his shit, so that's he's got good. a plus 12. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Actually, no, he's that one. Um, no, it doesn't know. Yeah, you, you fool people. You don't have a drink of your nice, clear drink. Like, you don't even know what it is. Could actually be nice. Excellent. Sam. It could not oh, be. Oh, Lavari, would you oh, like to try be. this? 
Wit doesn't oh. drink, Ryan. Ah, uh, okay. Could be water for you, you know. Uh, Alvare will take a, a sip of hers. It's exquisite. It is perfectly tasteful. It's the right balance of body and strength. Well, if I could get some of this from my tavern, that would be uh, amazing. You uh, want a tavern? Oh, we yeah. do have a extra <gasps> supply of these drinks. Um, I believe your one would run you a total of seven platinum pieces a pop. For for the bottle or for the drink? The the um, <laughs> for a bottle. The creatures that procure, um, create this such drink no longer exist. Oh, well, that would explain why it's so good. And excellent, for excellent provision. Yours, um, my he hasn't actually never uh, he's never learned your name. Such. Um, for yours, my large friend, the Dwarven Fire Ale runs three silver a bottle. And for yours, my eloquent friend, it is a total of three gold pieces a bottle. Excellent, excellent. Well, it it, it, it definitely does taste better than the, the Fire Ale, for sure. I, I, I Yes, the, the, the price is definitely indicative. It is more of an acquired taste, but our Dwarven compatriots that have visited us have never requested anything but the Fire Ale. It is a delicacy in their life. Oh, excellent. It- Oh, would you wonderful. like to try mine? Since you seem to be such an astute. Uh, oh well, as as you see, I have a rather refined sense of taste in general. You know, in both people and in drinks. So of course, a sleight of hand on the drink. Of course, a twenty-one. Hey. Uh, yeah, so my guy does something. Nope. Twenty-four. <laughs> per perception. You notice that he brings it to his hat. He brings the glass to his mouth. He swirls it. It barely kisses the side of his lips, but looks like a full swig and puts it back down the glass on the table. It's obviously not the first time he's ever done this and he is a master of his craft. If you weren't looking at him at the right time, you would never have noticed. Well, it looks like you miss your mouth. You should try again. Oh, I never miss my dear woman. I would love to try to hit your mouth. <laughs> 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 But you should try to take a real sip. It's delicious. Well, well, you see, I, I know, I know, one such of yourself, you know, are not, not into the whole, the whole tasting of sorts. You more guzzle, but you take a <laughs> small sip and you aerate it onto the tongue in order to get the full palate and the full bouquet of the drink, and then you, you refrain for another while. You say while this like you even sit. took anything in your mouth. It didn't even touch you. <laughs> I think you are mistaken, Alavari. I definitely <laughs> saw him take it. Um, yes, I, I, I have absolutely no clue what you're, you're talking about. Although I have heard it is not healthy to mix drinks so much. It, it's for very other true, people. my friend Holder. Thank you very much. See, like Alvari, do you not care for my well-being? <laughs> oh, I care very much though. Well, well, thank you. I, I appreciate it. But it is very good. Um, I, I, w- I will have to buy a bottle of it myself for my, my own establishment. Oh, you have an, an well, establishment as well. Of, of course, of course. I have many establishments. I'm rather rather well to do myself, and I, I do many, many a fine thing. And you are just along on this for adventure's sake? Oh, yes. You know, I like to, uh, as you can see, I'm a rather accomplished fighter and... and you know, quite an adventurer of sorts, and I just can't keep myself off the road. You know, the money's inconsequential, but it's more the thrill of the matter is the thing. I see. Well, this must be pretty boring for you then, because we've just been walking through hallways. Oh, well, we, we get to meet some fine people and new people. Well, and I get to, I've made two great new friends in you and, in you and in Holder, and it will, it will be all well worth it when I get back home. Where is home for you? Oh, here and there. You know, my estates are, are all throughout the land, honestly. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a citizen of the world, you may say. I see. That. <laughs> you want to call him on any of it? I, like, I clearly know you're <laughs> lying just straight uh-huh. out. Like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. oh, okay, here we go. Uh, so, uh, wh- which one of your establishments would be your favorite? My my favorite would be, um, I own a small brewery in the mountains, actually. Oh, do you? And it, it does the most magnificent thing. We get rocks and we uh, <laughs> use them to imbibe the, the beverage with certain, uh, some would say medicinal qualities. You make and beer I- out of rocks? <laughs> Uh, you mentioned you have a brewery, B9768, pipes up and says, if a consortment of your goods could be sent to us, we would love to add it to our collection. Oh, excellent. When we when we leave, I will send it immediately. Excellent. This will be this will be a great deal of, of good relations between our people. Uh, uh, of, of course. Uh, completely complimentary, of course. I wouldn't even dream of charging you since you've been so nice to us. 
And Holder reaches out like his big old claws like towards their plates. He's like, if you aren't going to eat that. Uh, well, well, Holder, I am actually rather, rather famished myself. Um, I don't think that you would, you would enjoy, enjoy my plate and your plate. It might unsettle your stomach. Okay. <laughs> um, Alavari, uh, you said the bread was not did not look good. The bread looks like it's gone stale and it's been stale for a long time. The vegetables look like they were once nice, but they have shrunk and shriveled. Like they are really dry and just gone off completely. A nice fresh two day old meat. Mm -hmm. Nice freshly cooked, mm -hmm. absolutely sizzling steak. Juices flowing. It is beyond perfect. This is like a five star Michelin restaurant steak. Uh -huh. Okay. Um. Be uh, oh. So Nine, left. seven, six, eight. Will our host be joining us tonight? The family will not be joining you. They have not left their room in recent time, but they will be joining you for tomorrow for an audience. Oh, that's wonderful. They do not I intend hope they the, get a rest. They do not intend the guest quarters meals. Usually this is for our different dignitaries to meet, to talk, to discuss their own businesses, and they will meet in the private chambers of the family when they are called upon. Oh, uh, excellent. So um since as you said this is for, for, for dignitaries, um will will you be staying for the entire dinner or will you let us converse on our own for a little bit? Uh, you are free to converse on your own. I will be in attendance in the room along with, you notice now that while you've been talking, there are two, the, there are four of the small drones, just the eye ones, around the room. They are more like attendants. They don't have any weapons on them, but they have uh -huh. plates, they have glasses on them, they have cloths, and one of them stands by the dumb waiter, ready for calling up food or calling away plates. Okay. More like waiters at this situation. Mm -hmm. Got it. Gonna do with this food. May I have another shank of vermin? Uh, you are more than time, um, sir. I will give one established for you soon. And you hear that the dumb waiter shoots Holder. back up. Holder, I don't need mine. I'm not, I'm just not that hungry. We've only been walking today. Here, you can have mine. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, and, and, and just hard just gobbles it up. Oh, okay. Um, and, and, and halfling meat. And, and you, <laughs> Soylent Green is halfling meat. <laughs> and, and you can have. I, I guess I, I. I shouldn't have been so harsh with you, Holder. You can have mine also. And he'll lift up his plate to hand it to you. And he will drop it on the floor. Oh, well, my second roll. Oh. And he oh. picks it up. And <laughs> when you drop it, when it's, as soon as it slips out your hand, you see these robots instantly snap into action. Before it even hits the floor, one of them is already next to you. Started cleaning up. <clears throat> Well, these and are efficient the, the little meat, guys, aren't the meat, they? The meat itself is just put straight back into Holder's hand because, you know, it never touched the floor and he's a massive bug, but he don't care. <laughs> oh, okay. Even the robots recognize I'm him as a, a feral animal that's somehow tamed. <laughs> messaging to Wit. He's a bugbear. He probably is eaten worse than this. Like like halflings? He's eaten other halflings? I, I don't think Possibly. that our friend Holder would have done this. He's a, he's a rather refined fellow, as you can tell. I've only got the highest of esteem and respect for him. <laughs> I also have respect for him, but, you know, you don't always ask what people eat. And that's Technically, right. the halfling is a different species to you, so it shouldn't really have any negatives to you eating it. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to get uh, mad. It's socially, either, socially so. awkward for you to eat it, but it's not physically <laughs> bad. Uh... <laughs> Uh huh. It's true. It's very true. Yeah. No. No bad prions or anything. Cause yeah, it's not his his species. But um. Okay. Mad halflings disease. Is that what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they come from well, a small <laughs> island island of halflings in one section of the planet. Yeah. <laughs> Mad halflings disease, you know, this breed of halflings, they've gone completely mad. Some of them think they're dwarves and everything. <laughs> too meta, Sam. Too meta. I thought it was good. No, it was hilarious. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, and, and Wit will continue to uh, periodically pretend to sip his drink throughout the meal. <laughs> And at this point, like, another the dumb weight has come back down. It's got another plate with another steak on it. <sighs> and rushes it over to you and B9768 turns around and says, Unfortunately, due to supply levels, this will be the last steak you are allowed, sir. But it, it does appear that your compatriots have lost their appetite and you have uh, eaten a plenty. Well, that's a shame, but you know, this was very good meat. Thank you, I can kindly. Con I can contact our supply lines and see if there is more of this meat available before your departure. Mm, that would be wonderful. I I'm will going inquire to message and see what Holder is available. At this point, <laughs> be like, you know, that's the halflings that came. Sorry, you know, you know that the halflings that came in before us, right? What about them? That's the meat you're eating. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
I don't care if you're eating it, but uh, I mean, I, it's good halfling. I I'm you really should it. try it, but <laughs> I feel a little bad now. You should have said something before it's, he's eating four plates. It's, it's, I just don't. It's want not to like know. we don't have a way of communicating this secretly. <laughs> I was saying, well, at this sort of point, Hold is eating like a, a whole thigh <laughs> and half a shin bone worth of meat. <laughs> You, re- just, you really should try it, Olivar. It's, it's quite tasty. I just didn't I, want you ordering more and for them to go out and try to find some. This this was already done, so, you know, enjoy it while you can. But let's not order more, eh? <coughs> okay, I turn to the B9. <laughs> you know what? On second thought, I think I've had my fill, but I appreciate it. If that is how you feel, sir, we will just keep our supplies for ourselves. As you seem to have enjoyed it so much, I will recommend it to all of our guests. And we will see if we can acquire more of this meat. And I message Alivari, well, that backfired. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we want to keep our supplies up for if you ever visit again. Or any of your kind visits, sir. Thank you very much. If this has been you, an enjoyable meal. If you uh, are all finished with your meals, would you like to try a dessert, or would you want to retire for the night before your meeting with the family tomorrow? Oh, oh I, I, I love a dessert. <laughs> <laughs> he brings up. <laughs> he snaps his fingers, and three of the drones disappear from the room. Come back a couple of minutes later with a fine selection of rotted cakes. Like these things are just like muck and goop that's just been it's gone off so long ago that it's surprising it's still actually together they've been getting supplies for a few years from travelers and that sort of stuff but this stuff is not in a edible for normal. it's probably held together by the mold that grows on it pretty much yeah <laughs> the, the, this stuff is like how they found penicillin <laughs> I do believe that. Uh, there, is a, there is a nice cheesecake that is mostly mold now. I, I, I'm feeling a little bit uh, uh, tired. I think I'd like to just go back to my room now. Yes, and I'm I'm watching my caloric intake anyway, you know. I'm so... Gotta watch our figures, after all. <laughs> oh, and yes, holder... that's how we maintain these girlish figures. <laughs> Holder, like, very <laughs> poorly acted. He, like, grabs his stomach. He's like, oh, you know, I'm second thought. I, I think I may have eaten too much of that fine vermin um oh the halfling doesn't agree with me (laughs) (laughs) if that is how you all feel we can associate we can escort you back to your designated rooms that you've selected earlier in the evening (laughs) thank you very much and they lead you back holder gets his nice big room with two beds you guys go back into a room (laughs) oh this is the life (laughs) (sighs) he puts the two beds together and just like lays on it (laughs) like as you put together you try and like lay in the middle you are like you almost start to fall between the beds where your weight is enough to start pushing them back apart and they're not close enough for you to be firmly f- providing force on either side of the bed. Well, but it's, it's really it worth a shot. <laughs> then I'll just lay on one like normal. You just move all the covers and all the pillows and make yourself a little fortress of pillows. <laughs> oh, okay, well, it seems I... we're stuck together, Alvari, but um, I think... I think, as I said before, we got off on the wrong foot. Um, you said you're you're a musician of sorts, or of course, yes, yeah. of course. And um, I well, well, pull I, out my flute. I, excellent. I I dabble as well, actually, with the flute. Oh, do I you? I also play the flute. Um, I was wondering if I could play something for you, and you could judge it for me. <laughs> um, trying to think, Alavari. No, just have se- having seen you walk in, she's going to think that you're not a bard. So, we haven't really discussed what we do. We haven't seen each other in action. Would she be worried about you? <laughs> because Kim's worried about me. I, mean, I know general, what kind of school of bard you are. Me. And I know exactly what I could do to you. Um, uh-huh, I'm trying to do it to you before you do it to me. <laughs> oh, I um, this. She wouldn't know. She doesn't particularly trust you, but I don't think she knows that you're a bard. Why, I would love to hear some of your music. (laughs) Okay, okay, excellent. Well, it may not be as good as yours, but please give me any critiques or pointers. I'm very willing to, you know, learn and expand my knowledge, you know? Um, Absolutely. And and, and he plays you a song over the course of a minute. Uh Uh-huh. And I I need you to make a saving throw. Uh Uh-huh. Wisdom? (laughs) Uh uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I knew exactly what you were doing. 18. Oh, you beat my 16. (laughs) Oh. Oh. Uh, oh. you know, I, I will do a performance check just to see if it's any good. Uh, Holy crap. 31. It's amazing. You, you love it. He does pirouettes. He backflips. 
at one point he, t- he climbs up one of the posts of the bed and when he seems like he's about to fall down he just swings around it like it's a stripper's pole <laughs> I think Why? you need to give what that what your score was, Sam. Uh, thirty-one. Yeah, probably should have said On that before I start describing. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But um, it seems that's like impossibly good performance levels. I, uh, I have well, never what, what seen a performance of that caliber. I would love to have you come to my tavern sometime. Oh, and I, I will indeed. Um, I will indeed. It's it's great to see somebody that appreciates my my, my numerous talents, and um, it's 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 good to hear how how much it's changed your mood upon me. <laughs> uh, I don't know about my mood, but uh, well, I guess music always does brighten one's outlook, doesn't it? It it, it does indeed. I, I do enjoy a good song. Would you like to hear one of mine? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I, I don't know if you could maybe match the, the level of my performance. You know, aren't you a little bit shy? or? <laughs> but yours was so good. I would like to... Sh- maybe you could give me some point. Oh, I, I do inspire you- ones to make music themselves, I guess. So, of course, of course. Oh, God. <laughs> Go ahead and roll a wisdom save. Okay. Um, it's not Why good at my spell save? That's a six. <laughs> That's a six. So, with my enthralling performance, um, oh, did I not even put that on my sheet? Um, but you He's are... enamored with you for an hour and speaks highly of you to everybody he's, he meets. Yep. Uh-huh. uh-huh. So, I th- I think so what did you think Alvaro of my song? Bed. Oh, it's, it's marvelous. I've, I've never heard something so good. Oh, well, thank you. Your, your performance was quite good as well. I'm, I'm glad that you were able to uh, uh, acknowledge my mine as, as being as good as your. Oh, well, you know, I think I may have underestimated how, how, how impressive you are, you know? I think, I think you might be a person who even rivals <laughs> myself. And, and I think, you know, when it comes to caliber of person, there's, there's no greater compliment that I can give to you. Well, considering who that's coming from, I will take that as highest compliment. <laughs> I, I think that now, means Avari gets the bed then. Yep. <laughs> it does. Um, but but Avari, Al- 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 on the on the thing that I, I mentioned earlier, you know, I think honestly that you would be the perfect person to undertake this with me. Um, if if we need to, you know, maybe the big man he can break the crown and I can make it into a tiara. But um, you know, you can you can have the tiara if you like. That would be lovely. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, and, and how, but, how would you like to do this? So, in order to get out there, I think we have to wait for them to open the door. Or, or could you open the door for us? I, I suppose I could try to pick the lock. Ah, uh, well, Kent, I, I'm assuming we're not locked in. Have you um, tried the door? I, I have not tried the door, but, you Would know, you be so kind? Sure, and he'll go try the handle for the door. As you're walking over to the door, you can hear on the other side some footsteps start to approach instantly. And as soon as you open the door, you see B79968. We do request that you stay in your room during the evening processes, as this keeps the corridors clear for security purposes. Oh, oh, oh of course. I was just uh, inquiring as to how you were doing, my good man. I was worried about you. <laughs> Could we get um, some as water? I will usher a drone to collect your water. He shall be here in exactly six minutes. Excellent, excellent. He doesn't move either. And the two drones are now not blocking your path. You could try and move between them, but you'll be single file. Okay, um, so I can close the door again. I'm going to message Alvari. Okay, um, I have slightly an idea. Um, I myself, while I am dashing with a sword and and fantastic and all manner of and all manner of physical feats, uh, climbing is not my forte. Um, w- are are you? Do you? Would you happen to be any good at it? any of these things or uh, of climbing climbing of course i i suppose what is my <laughs> i'm i'm more of the acrobatic soul i could give you quite the show on that bedpost well i would be be more than happy to uh to, to let me show you what let you show me whatever you wish you know um but because he's enamored with you for god's sake um, but but I was more I was more thinking. Um, well well I can I can make one invisible. 
and hmm. and we could open the door and one could could leave without him noticing and then you know about you know what five minutes later another person could open the door and ask him another question and you could slip back in uh how long do you keep people invisible for this is all in message right yeah yeah it is now <laughs> well, I said message at the beginning. You did. And we both uh, have message, no, so we no can just keep it going. I, I assume this sort of talk was a message, to be honest. W- one hour. Okay. Uh, I, I, I can do for it for an hour. I think that would be more than enough. A well, woman of your magnificent skill and and great, great personage. Of course. Uh, and I at this I point, you do, do hear a knock on the door as the door opens. A small drone walks in. Goes over to the uh, coffee table, places a jug of water and two gla- fine glasses, and leaves. Excellent. Thank you very much. Doesn't even respond to that. Uh, they don't. They don't respond to you. These are simple. The, these are the simple ones that you've seen. They don't respond to anything beyond what they've been told to do. All right. So how about you make me invisible? You open the door and you ask for a basin to pour the water into to wash your face. Oh, oh! I've got no problem talking. We can we can talk all day. I can tell them whatever you wish. I appreciate it. Let's let's do that. Okay, excellent. So I'm gonna cast invisibility on her. There you go. Cut to Holder in his room and he's <laughs> bouncing on his bed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I was about to cut to you for a second then, but uh, is, it, is it just bouncing on the bed? Any requests yeah. to your <laughs> This is so fun. As, as you're jumping, after after like 20 minutes of jumping, you just the bed caves in from the weight. It's not designed for l- such large creatures to be jumping up and down. But luckily you have a spare. That's a shame, but I got to sleepy time. Oh no. And I go and sleep in the other bed. <laughs> Um, yeah. Okay. So so Wit will open the door. Um, he'll will. open it nice nice and wide and I know the monitor the, 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 the little guy is gonna come B- up. B seven six eight is B7, you, as soon as you start to open the door, he's already standing there waiting to address you. Okay, and oh, I'll yes, open it completely sir. wide. Slip past um, him easily enough. Roll me a sneak. And an acrobatics because you're gonna have to get round the um two other robots. You get that's you, a you twenty slip. for stealth. stealth and a twenty seven so, for acrobatics. While you're slipping through, we'll just do a little bit of conversation before we continue your section. So is it how may I assist you, sir? Uh well, you know, I I would love um the the water, you know, while it's delicious and cold, I was wondering if you have any lemon. And if you had a wash basin so that I could, you know, clean myself up, make myself resplendent for your 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 most honorable of people that you will be showing us tomorrow. I am not sure on our current supplies of lemons, but I can put a request into our supplies division. They will get back to me inside the next 25 minutes. Excellent. And as this is as you're speaking, Avari slips through. But as soon as you step your foot outside of the room, Avari, mm-hmm. the two other drone uh, um, shield drones at the other end of the, this small corridor turn around and block your entrance. These creatures can clearly see and tell where you are. B7968 turns around. Madam, we do ask that you stay out of the corridors during the evening processes, as this keeps it clear for security purposes. <laughs> um... <laughs> He doesn't address the fact that you turned invisible. He just asks you to not be in the corridor. Crap. They can see me even if I'm invisible. Okay, well, um... Oh, I'm I'm terribly sorry. I was uh I was just gonna step out and uh, stretch my legs a little bit. It's a little bit cramped in here with the two of us. I'll just go back in. Um, we'll figure out something. The rooms are d- designed to be adequately large for six occupants. As a normally it will be at least one delegate and their assistants who will then sleep in the upper stairs quarters. As you are all honoured guests, you have been allowed to stay in this lower section. I see. Thank, well, thank you, you very much. Yes. No and we will see if we have your limes or anything for you in momentarily. So. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Any sort of citrus will do, honestly, that you have on hand. Um, yep. And you're and escorted back, back in into room. your room. Well. Oh, damn it. Fooled they, again. <laughs> they seem to have a, a side outside of our normal parameters. I, I can I can see that, you know, and it's, it's very disappointing, I've got to say, because nobody lets me steal their cool things. <laughs> Surprisingly. You know? <laughs> yeah, you know. Well, well, they're gonna be able to see us if we try to do anything to grab. I do have an unseen server. I could this is still in message by the way. I could potentially I assumed. next time it opens, I could send out my unseen server and see if they can see that. Oh well whatever I do you come up with I would say would be be far superior to mine. Obviously. Obviously, you know, and if and if that doesn't work, we can just retire to the bed. <laughs> I'm not above <laughs> such things. 
What a night that would be to remember with wit. <laughs> Oh, he's enamored with her. I don't know. I I'm playing enamored. <laughs> oh, I'm just surprised. Like, even in that situation where he's enamored with someone else, he's still kind of self-centered and focused on himself. <laughs> well, well, yeah, he's trying to get her into bed now. So, you know, yeah, it makes sense. That's totally what he would do. Um, so, you guys have made your plan. Twenty minutes, uh, about almost exactly twenty-five minutes after B seven nine six eight said that they will be down. The door opens again, B7968 enters the room and um, presents you with a bowl full of extremely dried up citrus fruits. They are almost dust at this point, but they, he does hand you them. Okay, while the creature's in the room, Alivari is going to do um, create an unseen servant and yep. see if the, any of the robots are noticing that it's there. Um, give me a perception test. Me? Yes. To see you're, if you're oh, the one to trying see to see if they're notice. noticing it. That's a 14. So you do notice that one of the drones on the door, he watches it exit. You can see the eyes visibly track where it goes. Okay. Then but I he doesn't will. step in to stop it. They kind of recognize that it's not an attendant. It's more of just a ghostly figure. So they recognize that it's even less of a threat than a person to them. Hmm. I'm going to have it go take a go take the tiara first. Um, as soon as it climbs up of the statue, you don't, you guys can't see, but you hear a loud, you hear a loud clap. And you lose the spell. Ah. <laughs> I'm going to message Wit. Whale, it seems they know how to stop my, my servant as well. And at this ah. point, it's yes. getting late, so B7968 does insist that you adjourn for the night. As well, you to the bed, be, woman. <laughs> you do right. not want to be unrest. You want to be well rested for has, meeting the family tomorrow. But has it been more than an hour since I've played my I'm music? I'm saying in this him? process, it's been, I'd say, 56 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you've done a fair bit and there's a 25 minute gap so I would have said half an hour but it's like it's been just over there <laughs> oh, I've had worst one night stands let's go oh my <laughs> no no well okay this is this is I'm honestly gonna this, this is what I'm gonna say about about wit if it lasts for an hour right and we've gone 56 minutes probably by the time they get to the bed he's regained his senses and he doesn't know what to do with himself um because yeah um oh uh, I'm, I'm 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 very sorry uh that was entirely too forward of me i i well, you know no. i wouldn't want to take advantage of a, a wonderful woman such as yourself and um i will i will sleep upon the upon the couch here um and and once again very very sorry oh what and i'm assuming like we're interested at this point so i'm just maybe like uh, yeah what? you're you're down to the skivvies and uh, um, it has his breastplate on but pants <laughs> off <laughs> It, it doesn't like he never he never revealed his breastplate, but you can see that he's he's very embarrassed by the situation. And if this is okay with you, Sam, it is your character. Yeah, so go on, you do you, your if thing. You don't want this. Um, he seems to be as the spell has just come out of its effects. He's suddenly having a few stage stage performance issues where he's not as enamored by you anymore. <laughs> He doesn't. He doesn't know that it was cast, though. Well, I mean. No, no, he doesn't. He, no, he just he all doesn't. of a sudden he doesn't feel as attracted to you. Gotcha. There's nothing wrong with your character. He just he suddenly feels like this isn't really what I want to be doing. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, oh. all right, I guess. Holders ready. And <laughs> as as you both She'll return to your bed. beds, yeah, as you both return to your beds, we close for the night and we call the episode. Excellent. Oh my god. Thanks for listening to Glamorous Guests Part 2, Performance Issues. This one really got wild, and it only gets more interesting from here. If you enjoy what we do, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, or wherever you listen to it. It really helps us out. If you leave a five-star review, we'll read it on air. Please check us out on Twitter at BeholdersIPod or on our website at www.BeholdersIcast.com. You can fo follow Ryan, who DM'd this episode, at DuffDuffTheThird, Sam, who played Wit, at SamSlot007, Kim, who played Alvari, at MetsGirl, Ben, who played Holder, at Miro4D2, and Alex, our usual wonderful DM, at AlexDMBE. Editing and effects by Sam Kanai. Thanks, and we'll see you next week.
All music from filmmusic.io. Age of AI, instrumental by Sasha Endy. Age of AI, feet, Kara Square by Sasha Endy. Smooth Loving by Kevin McLeod. Darkling by Kevin McLeod. Almost New by Kevin McLeod. Covert Affair by Kevin McLeod. Switch by Sasha Endy. License Creative Commons by www.creativecommons.org forward slash licenses forward slash buy forward slash 4.0 forward slash all effects by zapsplat.com this work is licensed under a creative commons attribution non-commercial share alike 4.0 international license www.creativecommons.org forward slash licenses forward slash buy forward slash 4.0 forward slash